Hello and welcome to the simple pathfinding tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be learning how to use nav mesh agents and pathfinding tools in Playmaker to make this guy follow us around and when he gets close enough he'll just stop but if we get far enough away from him he'll start following us again. Okay so just a quick overview of the scene what we have here is just a ground and we have some walls set up. Uh, there's nothing fancy here. These walls have colliders on them. You can walk through these doors and that's about it. I have this player game object, which is just a first person character controller that we've built in other tutorials. And I have a folder here for animations of our NPC that's gonna be following us around. There is an idle animation and a walking animation. And I got these from Mixamo.com. This is Mixamo.com. It's a free library of animations and models. And I just have the standard asset here. If you wanna follow along with these animations, what you could do is you could just pop over here to Mixamo, make an account, like I said, it's free. And you can come in here to the search bar and search something like idle. And you have all these idle animations. So if I click on, let's see, which one did I use? This one, breathing idle. You could see this idle animation is applied to this. Now you can hit download and it'll give you some settings, which format, whether or not it has its skin, how many frames per second, and any keyframe reduction. Shouldn't have to worry about any of this really. Uh, you could just hit download and then save it into a folder where you'll be able to access it for this tutorial. So that's the idle animation. This is pretty straightforward because he's just standing still, but if you wanted, for example, the walk animation, and I came down here to this walking animation, the thing that might throw you off is that he is kind of in this loop where he's walking for a few feet. Now we have this little check box here in place that when you check, he walks in place. And this is more often than not the format that you're gonna want to use when downloading animations from Mixamo. You can also change these other parameters. These are just sort of stylistic things, the character arm space. And then again, you could just hit download and it'll give you an FBX file. So let's say you've downloaded those files and now you're in here. This is what you would have, these two FBX files. So to get started with our NPC, I'm just gonna drag him into the scene, put him right here, and you'll see this little blue icon up here. That means that it's still referencing the FBX, so we can right click, and then under prefab, we can unpack completely. So that'll make it its own little individual game object in the scene, and there's nothing underneath it that's referencing any other of our assets as well. So we could now take this game object and rename it NPC. And now we can add some components on it. So we'll add a nav mesh agent. And I'm just gonna change his speed down to something like one. And then we'll add in a animator component. Okay, now with this animator component, it needs an animator controller. So let's right click in here, create animator controller, and we'll call this NPC. And if we double click on our animator controller, it'll open up this window. This is our animator window where you could see all the different states with animations that we could throw in. Every animator has an entry state and it'll have an animation that it goes to first. So for us, we're gonna want that to be our idle animation. So you could expand this FBX and this little triangle that says mixmo.com, that's the animation from it. So with it selected, we can hit control or command D and that'll duplicate it, and that'll make it its own separate file. So now we actually have the animation separated from this FBX. And I can rename this to idle. So now we have our own little idle animation instead of this whole package, which includes the joints and the model and the textures and all that stuff. We just really want this animation right now. We'll do the same thing for walking. I'm gonna expand it, come down here, Control D. I'm gonna rename this one walk. Okay, so now we have our two animations. Now, in our animator controller, I'm going to drag and drop this idle animation in, and you'll see that it automatically makes an arrow from entry to idle. So this is going to be the first animation that plays. Then if I drag and drop our walk animation in, it's its own little thing. There's no arrows pointing to it. So that means we have to tell the animator controller to go to it if we want it to play that animation. Uh, one last thing, these animations, we want them to loop. So let's just select the idle animation and click this loop time. Let's walk animation, also click loop time. Okay, cool. Now back in our scene, we can have is select our NPC, 
And now with all of our nav mesh agent stuff set up and our animator stuff, stuff set up, we actually want to set up nav mesh stuff in the world. So if I select the ground and then I come up here to window, AI, navigation, it'll open up this navigation window. What I can do is select this navigation static box and this navigation area, we can set this to walkable. Now, if I hit bake, you'll see that this whole platform gets a blue tint to it. And it doesn't really exactly cover the whole thing, but it gets this big blue square on it. Now, this whole blue space is representative of where our nav mesh agent can walk around on. Now, obviously, we don't want it to walk through these walls, so what you could do is select each of these walls. I'm holding a shift so I can select multiple game objects. And then I can come back here to this object tab, click navigation static, and instead of walkable, I'll put not walkable. And I'll come back here to bake, and I'll hit bake again. And you'll see now that it kind of carves out these edges so you can't walk around these areas. The problem here is that now we have this little island that our NPC wouldn't be able to get to because there's no walkable area between the door. So that's because of agent radius. This is kind of a way that the pathfinding system decides how big the NPCs are and whether or not they'd be able to fit through certain areas. So if we change this radius down to something like 0.25 and then hit bake again, you'll see that that little gap gets bridged and now things can actually walk through there. Okay, so our world's set up and our NPC is set up with all the nav mesh and animator stuff, we can start getting to the programming. So with our NPC selected, I'm gonna right click, add FSM, and I'm gonna rename this FSM NPC follow. Okay, now in this first state, we'll just call it idle, and we'll make it a second state, and we'll call it follow. Okay, now in this idle state, what we'll do is have an animator play, and we're just gonna type in exactly how it's spelled in our animator controller, idle, so that's with a capital I, so I-D-L-E, and then we're gonna have a get distance. So with this get distance action, it's gonna be getting the distance between the owner, which is the NPC, and a target game object, which we can specify as the player. And then we'll store the result in a new float variable called distance to player. And that'll be running every frame. So what that's gonna be doing is gonna be creating a float variable that tells you the distance between itself and the player. Then we're gonna get a float compare. I'll move this down to the bottom. And the first float that we're gonna be comparing is the distance to player. And we're gonna be comparing it to something like three. And we'll be checking if the distance to player is greater than three. And if it is, it'll send off to a new event. We'll just call next. And we'll add that event. And it's gonna be running every frame as well. This next event will fire off the follow. And then it'll do whatever it does when we follow. So basically here what we have is it's gonna be playing this idle animation. It's gonna be constantly checking the distance between itself and the player. And if the player is further than three units away, then it goes to the next state. We can copy and paste all of these actions actually. So I'm just hitting Control A, Control C, and in this follow state, I'm gonna hit Control V. Okay, except for this time in the animator play, we're gonna have the walk animation play. And instead of having this greater than, it'll be under less than, and we'll create a new event called send back. Okay, and the send back will of course take us back to the idle state. So what it's saying this time is if it's less than three, then we just go and sit here at idle. To start programming the pathfinding with Playmaker, we're gonna have to get the pathfinding package. So you can open up your ecosystem and type in pathfinding. Alternatively, you can go to the pathfinding webpage here on the Playmaker site. Down here, you could get this pathfinding link, then download, and then go ahead and save it wherever. And you come up here to assets, import package, custom package, 
and then import your pathfinding package. Once that is imported, you're gonna find two new categories in your actions browser, the nav mesh category and the nav mesh agent category. In our follow state, we're gonna to wanna to put in a set agent destination as game object. And we're gonna set our destination to the player. So this NPC is gonna be going toward our player. Let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing actually is that the idle animation is not playing and if I move away, neither does the walk animation. So that means if I select this NPC, come over here to our animator, you'll see that we never put our controller in here. So we could just drag and drop this controller right in there. Now that should work just fine. Okay, so there we go. Idle animation is playing, walk away, starts following us. But then he starts sliding toward us and then stops, even though he went to his idle state. So what's happening there is the nav mesh agent component is setting its stopping distance on its own and it's auto braking and all that kind of stuff, which sort of conflicts with how we wanna program it here in our state machine. So what we can do is here in the idle state, we'll have a set agent is stopped action put it here at the top, and we're just gonna leave this unchecked. So that's a way of saying that the agent is not stopped. So we're gonna check it here on the idle state, meaning that the agent will be stopped. And then in the follow state, we're gonna put in another set agent is stopped, except instead of being checked, we're gonna have it unchecked, which is another way of saying that he's free to move. Let's hit play. All right, so he's just standing there, and then we move away from him, starts following us. And once he's close enough, he stops. And you can see that he's gonna navigate around this building in accordance with our uh, navigation mesh that we set up earlier. And what's cool about this is that you can set up things with staircases and platforms and all sorts of stuff. It's a very easy way to give your AI a whole pathfinding system. Ah! Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.